Were you nervous? Or? Probably something I can't say on television, but uh, yeah, it was nerve wracking. I was. Uh, it, we were actually having our uh, end of the semester faculty workshop, and I got the email, and then I had to go down and sit through the last about hour of the workshop, kind of thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen in the next year? Oh, and you didn't so, have a chance to talk to your family or anything then? About no, it? not right away. It wasn't until after I got home and, you know, an hour, hour or two later, I got to talk to them. Were they really supportive of your decision? Oh, they were supportive, but of course they were not right. too thrilled with the, the call either. So, but it was something I knew would happen, could happen with, uh, you know, 20 years in the military, right. and reserves, and National Guard. Um, where exactly were you stationed? I was in Baghdad, in the Green Zone. So I was very fortunate in my assignment in that I wasn't in, say, Fallujah or Ramadi or Mosul, where there's a, a lot of activity going on. Uh, there's a lot of, of insurgent activity in Baghdad, but uh, there's an area in Baghdad called the International Zone or the Green Zone, which is heavily fortified outside. So it's really like this little island of, of safety within the, the greater part of Baghdad. And I was there uh, working for the civilian police assistance training team. So you had training prior to going to Baghdad? Well, yeah, before I went to Baghdad, uh, and, of course, I've been in the military on and off, well, not on and off, but uh, reserves, not active duty, for about clo closing on 30 years now with a couple of short breaks in service. And uh, so I had that training. But then, of course, when we got called, we went to Camp Atterbury, Indiana, for about two and a half months for some additional training. And then we went over to Baghdad. Hmm. What types of things did you do to pass the time when you were there? Well, of course, we worked long hours. We worked uh, usually... 12-hour days, often 14-hour days. Uh, as I was there longer, the day shortened a little bit as the mission Some of the, the mission was evolving, and so some of the things that were taking lots of time early on, we were figuring out how to do. So it was, it, the days got a little bit shorter, but we worked long days. But what, we do you, did, what do you mean by work? What, uh, well, again, I was lucky. I worked in an office. It was, it was not like I was out patrolling. I did get out into the streets sometimes, but most of the time I was just working in an office. So it was mostly just paperwork? About uh, paperwork, computer work. I got real good at some uh, PowerPoint skills and those sorts of things. Uh, but then once in a while I'd go out to visit police stations. We worked the police assistance training team. Our job was to help the Ministry of Interior rebuild their forces so that they could then take over control of the, of the uh, country and for their own security. And so I'd go visit police stations sometimes. And, uh, but mostly I was in the office. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us more about your theater production that you produced uh, and well, directed. Well, uh, when I got over there and uh, realized the situation and, and, and that I had a captive audience with all these folks stuck in the green zone, uh, I thought, uh, wouldn't it be neat to do a show? I mean, I'm a theater professor. It's one of the first things I think about is, gee, what can I, you know, what, how can I continue to, to, to work in my field? Or when when I see an area, I think, you know, gee, wouldn't it be neat to do a show here? And so uh, I talked to the people at the morale and welfare office, and uh, initially it looked like we couldn't do the show because of the work schedule. But uh, a couple months they called me and said, no, you think you can do it? And I said, yeah, because I really wanted to. And we produced a play called Bigfoot Stole My Wife, which is a series of monologues. Yeah, that's an interesting title. Oh, it's a great title. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's monologues based on, on tabloid headlines. So you have some, some silly ones like Bigfoot Stole My Wife or I Ate My Best Friend's Brain, Best Friend's Brain, which is my favorite title of the bunch. <laughs> Were the soldiers excited to be become part of the production? Yeah, they were. It was really gratifying to see the response. And it wasn't just soldiers. Uh, in, the, in the international zone, there's a lot of civilians. State Department has a lot of folks that work there. Actually, we, we perform the show inside the U.S. Embassy. Hmm. So a lot of State Department people, uh, of course, Department of Defense folks, and then contractors, and uh, not just U.S. people. We had a lot of the, uh, the coalition forces that were there. So there were folks from uh, Great Britain and uh, Georgia, the, the former Soviet Republic. Mm -hmm. It's now a nation in Georgia. And uh, Denmark, lots of lots of nations over there, and and it was well received. So how does it feel to sort of be like a local celebrity? It's uh, been real interesting. I'm starting to feel a little like, uh, of, okay, you know, don't people already know it already? I've I've, I've been there. I, uh, they've got to be getting sick of hearing about this. Uh, but people are real supportive and real nice. Uh, you know, I have a, a good friend of mine, a fellow I went over with. Uh, he's an active duty, uh, active reserve officer who works here in, in the Newcastle area. And like half the people in his office have been to Baghdad or, or to somewhere over there. So they're like, yeah, hi, Mike, glad to see you back. And I come back and say, oh, what was it like over there? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's strange being a little bit of a celebrity on the campus about it. Um, so what was the greatest lesson that you've learned? Uh, they have to still do your duty. And whether you, you know, you're, however you feel about what's going on. Uh, you know, I put my hand up 25 years ago and said, uh, I'll follow the orders. Uh, so when the call came, I went and did it, and I'm glad I did. I I, I, I hate to 
quote Don Rumsfeld, but, you know, you don't get to pick the war. And, uh, I mean, I grew up wanting to go fight World War II and stop the Nazis. Uh, this isn't exactly the war I wanted to fight, right. but, uh, but it's the one my country called me for, so I went. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time.